Hello and welcome to this Adina training video where we are going to show the steps to perform the collapse analysis of a building structure like the one you see on the screen. Collapse analysis may be required to assess the redundancy of a structure and its ability to avoid disproportionate collapse when subject to extreme or accidental events. We may also want to better understand the ultimate load capacity of the structure and its potential failure mechanisms. In this particular video, we're going to see how to analyze the progressive collapse of this structure when it loses one of its supports, for instance, this one down here. The model is very similar to the one we created during the previous Adina training video on how to create a model from scratch, even though it's possible to import as well models like this from other Ventry products like RAM or Start Pro. Let's have a quick look at what we have in this model. So in terms of the loading, we have the self weight applied to the whole structure. We have some um, small lateral load applied to the north and south facades. And we have a uniform pressure applied to each floors, except of the first floor where we have, um, we see that towards the side of the building, the pressure is, is actually higher. It's, it's, it's a bit larger than everywhere else in the building. And this additional load is right on top of the support that the structure is going to lose. The loading is controlled with one time function that we are going to ramp up from zero to one, and then we are going to maintain constant. So we will lose the support right when the load reaches its maximum value at time one, and then we will continue to apply the load with a constant factor. If we have a look at the tree view, we have a, a two elastic materials, concrete and steel. We have rectangular sections and I-beams. The columns are going to be made of steel and they have an I-section applied. We have here our loading, as I was saying. And if we have a look at the element groups, we have shell elements to model our slabs. We have beam elements for the floor beams, as we showed on the previous Adina training video, and we have beam elements applied to the columns. So most of the columns, all of them except of one, they have element group two applied, and then we have elements group four, which is the one that is going to um, be missing at some point in analysis. So if we right click and highlight, we see that this is our column right here. So if we right click and modify these columns or column laws, if we go to the advanced tab on the element birth and death time, we're going to specify a one on the death field. Here, what we're specifying is that at time one, which is when the load reaches its maximum value, then this is when we are going to make this um, element disappear. It's going to be deactivated. So we click OK. Another thing that I'm going to do is through the uh, Manage Materials command button, I'm going to define a new bilinear elastoplastic material model that I'm going to assign to uh, the columns in my model. So I need to define a specify a Young's modulus and a Poisson's ratio. I'm going to have a initial yield stress, a density, and a strain hardening modulus that I'm going to specify as one millionth, for instance, of my initial Young's modulus. I can click OK and close. I'm going to come to my um, the columns, the general ones, modify, and we're going to specify a material number three that we've just created and click OK. Next, I'm going to also, I need to, through the control analysis assumptions, I'm going to have a um, large displacements and rotation specified within the uh, my kinematics. So any, um, for instance, buckling or P delta or any large displacements and rotations that the structure may see, they will be captured as well. So I can click OK to uh, close the dialog. 
And the last thing to consider is the time step. So from the control menu, time step. This is the time step strategy that I've decided to follow. I will have 10 time steps at 0 0.1 as we ramp up the loading. But then when we lose the support, there is that sudden loss in stiffness. Um, I decided to reduce my time step to 0 0.005. And as we start to have larger displacements and potential plasticity, I think I may need a smaller time step. So this is the time step strategy, as I was saying. Um, but also here on control, uh, on porthole and time steps and nodal and element results, because it, it, there is a possibility that this time step will be required just for convergence more than accuracy. So for this last set of time steps, I'm going to request results only one every five to keep my results file to a reasonable size and avoid um, adding more resources and I really need to evaluate the, the solution. So I have this for the nodal results, uh, but I'm going to copy as well to element results. So if now we go to control, porthole, element results, we have the same output request. So for the final time steps, we only output results for one every out of five. So, um, so with that, we are pretty much ready to solve the analysis. So as usual, let's, um, let's create the data file and, and start to uh, run the analysis. So we see that the analysis is um, having convergent issues when the load is ramped up and we try to uh, remove that column, so there is a possibility that it won't um, get to converge. There we go, so the analysis actually didn't converge, so let's see what we can do, because this is what happens when there is a, a sudden change in the structure and some of the areas may become um, unstable and it's not unusual to have convergence issues. So Adina has an option here under static analysis options, use automatic time stepping and click on the three dots. So we have the low speed dynamics option, which is a special technique thought to help with a convergence problem. So we are not actually looking for very strong dynamic response. All we are aiming to is to bring in some damping and inertia factors to help with the convergence of the analysis. But again, we have a quasi static response here. We're not looking for a particularly dynamic response, we use this special technique to help convergence. And this is particularly well suited for collapse and post-collapse analysis like the one we have right now in hand. So I have a dumping factor and inertia factor. We could tweak this. The inertia factor can be anywhere between zero and one if we want to completely switch off inertia effects or we want to take them into account up to a certain extent. They are controlled by a time function. So in this case, I have time function two. I click on the three dots and it's a constant function during the whole analysis that will apply to the dumping inertia factors. And because we don't have any uh, significant dynamic effects, I'm going to leave the settings as they are, as the default applied to the whole model from the beginning. We click OK and OK. And let's proceed to um, run the analysis again. We overwrite the data file and we're going to see how the um, analysis goes using the low speed dynamics option. So we could see, we could just see the analysis going through those initial time steps where it was not converging before we started to use low speed dynamics and it has now completed the full uh, set of time steps. So we can click OK. We see that it's taking about 12 minutes to run, even though we had fairly conservative, fairly small time steps. So we could have actually run this in, um, in a shorter time. OK, so let's close the dialogues and save the model and let's open the post processing screen and have a look at the results. So open the file we've just created, the porthole file. 
And well, this is the structure in the collapse state, but let's go back to the first time step. Um, I usually like changing the, the settings a little bit. So on element depiction, I'm going to uh, visualize the top and bottom of my shells. And let's make the uh, beam elements a little bit thicker. Um, let's shade in a solid way and element group one, let's make it uh, gray just so we can see, differentiate things a little bit better. Uh, one thing I didn't mention at pre-processing was that uh, I, I modeled a, or I set up a rigid surface to act as the ground. So when the structure reaches, if any part of the structure, particularly the slabs, they reach the ground, then they won't continue to uh, to, to move downwards. They just stop at the ground. Um, actually, on next study in a training video, we talk about contacts. So if you are interested, um, you can watch that. Right, so let's see how the structure uh, moves and deforms as we progress with time steps. So, so at the beginning, we front up the loading and then our column is now disappear during the following time step. And after this, now there is going to be, so we, we have the loading, of course, applied, and there is going to be some redistribution of the vertical weight. So the structure was perfectly able to withstand the load before that member was lost, but now we see that we have one member that starts to buckle, and then as this member can't carry load because it's buckling, then the load continues to be uh, redistributed to other members in the structure. So this is a very, from a structure analysis point of view, this is very um, unstable situation. We have members going through instabilities, bifurcation points, and, and buckling simultaneously. And this is a part of what the low speed dynamics is helping us with. We can see as some members fail, how the loading is redistributed and others start to fail as well, up to the point where we have plenty of members at the ground floor here buckling because they can't take, they don't have the spare capacity to, um, to take on that additional load. Um, so in this case, we can confirm that this structure doesn't have the uh, redundancy or the spare capacity to be able to withstand uh, that extra load because of or to redistribute the load coming from this missing, missing column. Um, another thing that uh, we may want to, to do is, for instance, we can quickly create an animation. So through display on movie shot, load step. Let's start from the um, time one, because before that, all we do is to ramp up the load and let's limit this to, for instance, uh, 50 frames. So I think it will create that quite quickly. Uh, and we can see the whole structure moving down and then, well, here on save, we could create a um, the, our animation, 30 frames per second. We have uh, 50 frames, so that's going to run in less than a second. Let's put perhaps um, 15 frames as it was. And we can now um, open our um, our video, and well, we see how the structure is collapsing and how it's making contact with the with the ground. Uh, we go back to the model and another thing that might be interesting to see is the um, displacement time history of one of the points in the, for instance, at the uh, one of the floors, at the top floor. So let's activate the node visualization and let's get a bit closer to one of these, one of these nodes. So let's see if we can capture that particular node at the top story. Um, and yeah, that's the note that we want. We click OK. Let's clear the screen and let's print. We want the um, displacement in the X. So for instance, let's look at the vertical displacement um, and how it varies with, with the total time. So we see how the, the displacement is small as the, the change with time, but suddenly there is a quite quick um, change as the columns start to buckle following the, uh, that missing member. So let's clear and uh, replot the mesh again. And well, this is the end of this Adina training video, this introduction to collapse analysis. Thank you very much for watching. 
If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.